All right, everybody, um, turn to the book of Psalms, and we're going to start in uh, Psalms 1, verse 1. And I'll go ahead and read the, uh, the verse that I'll be talking about here. So, once you get there, uh, I'll start reading here. So, the Bible says in Psalms 1, 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So, let me, let me go ahead and start off with a prayer here, and, and, and obviously we should pray before we start preaching, but, you know, Lord, uh, thank you for this time here, and I just pray for the brethren that they be edified through, your, uh, through all this preaching that we have. Uh, I please pray that you uh, fill me with the Holy Spirit and preach your word, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Okay, so the title of my sermon tonight is Feign Blessing. So, what does feign mean? Feign means to fake something or, or to prop up something that uh, maybe isn't real or isn't true. Um, and obviously God you know, blesses us in certain areas. And, and obviously the Bible said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. But unfortunately we have a lot of fake people who are posing themselves to be blessed or other people that are looking at other pastors or just certain examples in life, you know, people in Hollywood, and they're saying, hey, wow, that person's blessed. Or, you know, have you ever walked down the street, you ask someone how their day is doing, and they say, oh, brother, I'm blessed. You know, they may not be Christian, they may not love God or any of that, but they'll claim to be blessed. But I'm going to talk to you tonight about, you know, some of those uh, uh, topics where I find people would claim that they're blessed. And, you know, it's a feigned blessing. And unfortunately, we have a lot of people that aren't identifying that. So what I'll do is, you know, the first point I want to make is, is wealth and the feigned blessing of wealth. Um, so if you'll turn to Proverbs uh, chapter number 30, verse 8. Let me get here myself. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. The Bible says, Remove far from me vanity and lies, giving neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal in vain and take the name of my God in vain. And you know, this is a very righteous thing to pray to God and say, You know what? You know, give me what I need for this day. Give me what I need uh, to, to provide for my family. But I really truly believe that gaining more than that can be a hindrance in the Christian life. And obviously we want to be able to serve God and be faithful unto Him and, and not forsake Him. And a lot of the times that, you know, even myself, you'll get too prideful and, and you start thinking, you know, the bank account looks great and you don't need God anymore. And that's just too unfortunate. And, and we need to look at ourselves and ask God, you know, don't give me riches or poverty, you know, ask Him. And obviously we want to provide for our family, but we need to, you know, stay focused on the truth. Amen. And uh, so... The point I wanted to make with that is there's an example of this in the Bible where it's, it actually hindered somebody from getting saved. And I'm not saying it's the entire reason, but if you'll turn your Bible to Matthew chapter number 19, we'll go through a real life example Jesus encountered. Uh, let me get there myself. So Matthew chapter number 19, verses tw verse 21. Uh, and this is the rich young ruler. So Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell, uh, and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This guy was rich. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And you know what? Listen, we don't have to sell our possessions to get saved. It's by faith through grace, and amen for that. But here's the problem is this guy was so focused on that. And you know what? Obviously, he didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. He didn't believe that he was God in the flesh. And that was the, the first error. But you know what? A lot of times people are hindered with pride. And that's what it all falls down to is the fact that, you know, they want to they wanna be glorified in the flesh. And they want to say, look how blessed I am. And you know what? We have a lot of actors and a lot of people in the entertainment industry that are wicked as hell. And you know what? That's all they care about is gaining more wealth. And they want more pride. And they want to get puffed up. And you know what? God's going to put them back down in their place, and they're not blessed by God. It's a fake, feign blessing, okay? So we need to understand that. And you know what? Here's the true blessing. Go to Matthew chapter number 6. Here's the true blessing in this category. Look, we ought to humble ourselves. You know what? You ought to ask God for that. You can't just do it yourself, and you can't take everything in your own, in your own hands, unfortunately. We need God. And the Bible says uh, in, in Matthew 6, verse 20, but lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither not a moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Listen, if your treasure is on this world and on this, and on this earth and gaining riches in this world, guess what? You're probably doing not as much to gain rewards in heaven. You know what? We ought to be soul winning and doing the right things to, to, to not be involved in feigned blessings. You know, a lot of churches even are involved in this as well. You know, they want to sit here and, and save up all this money in their bank account when they ought to be soul winning instead. Amen. So you know what? And, and, uh, so my next point, I want to move forward. I, got, I don't know how much time I have left, but... In number, uh, sorry, my second point is highly educated men. You know what? That's another thing, too, that uh, is a feigned blessing. You know, obviously, you know, wisdom is of the Lord, and we ought to seek after the Lord's wisdom, and the Bible is the truth, and the Bible is the Word of God, and we better be, be abiding in the Word of God. But often you have professors, you have people that puff themselves up, and, you know, the world will call them very intelligent, but they can't even figure out where man came from, and they want to say it came from nothing. You're an idiot, and you're a fool. You know what? We ought, to be, we ought to be in the Word of God and seeing what God says about you know, being puffed up in, in, in that aspect. So go, go to me with Romans 1. This is a clear example where this actually takes place. And you know what? And this is a clear teaching about the reprobate doctrine. But you know, I want to dive it a little bit deeper in, in verse 21. So Romans 1, 21, the Bible says, Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And you want to sit here and tell me that they're blessed? That's not true. And you know what? We better, we better be in the word of God figuring out what's true and what a real blessing is. And that's not a real blessing to be that wise in your own conceits. You know, it's, it's, it's wicked. So let's go over real quick. I want to skip past to uh, 1 Corinthians 1.25. Just going to stay on this topic real quick here. 1 Corinthians 1.25. Let's see. Got to get a new Bible here. Um, okay, so 1 Corinthians one twenty five, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And we ought not to rely on the world for our wisdom, but obviously on God, which is what the verse is talking about here. You know what? Even though the world may look at us and say, wow, you guys are pretty stupid. You really think that God created the world? Yeah, we do. And we better be confident in that. We better you know, boast about that and, and uh, give glory and honor to God instead of these idiots that want to say that we came from nothing. It's stupid. Okay? So last point I want to bring up, it is my favorite one, is feign blessings through false prophets. And a lot of times we look at churches and we say, wow, they're pretty blessed. And they may have the, the, uh, the, the whole auditorium filled up with thousands of people. The offering for the tithe may be super high, but you know what? It's not true blessing from God. There's something lacking there. That should be a red flag. And I, I'm not against large churches. You know, I, I've been to churches that preach the truth and there's more people than that are here, but you know what? That doesn't matter. It's what God sees as a real blessing. And God will bless the right churches and God will bless the right people. So the first verse I want to go to is Galatians 1.8 for, uh, for this portion. And we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. So Galatians 1.8 There we are. All right, so Galatians 1, 8, the Bible says, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And you know what? Being accursed is the opposite of a blessing. And we have all these false prophets out here professing themselves to be wise. And you know what? They're actually fools in the, in the mind and the heart of God. You know what? It's wicked. And guess what? You know, they think they're so wise and, and so blessed. But guess what? Is it really a blessing to end up in hell for preaching a false gospel? You know what? God would disagree and God hates it. And you know, we ought to hate it too. We ought to call it out for what it is. It's a, it's a feigned blessing and it's wicked. And uh, the last portion of the scripture I'm going to go to is 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And we'll go ahead and end it there. So 2 Tim Timothy chapter number 4. And we're going to start in verse 2 here. The Bible says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And you know what? All these churches, what they're not doing is this. Right. You know, they're not standing up and, 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 you know, screaming from behind the pulpit and telling the truth and, you know, telling what God actually wants instead of they want to sit there and please everybody, uh, yeah. scratch everyone's back so they can be pleased, they can fill the tithing and uh, all the offerings. You know what? It's a feigned blessing. And people might look at that and the world might look at that and say, wow, what a blessed church. You know, they got such a big building. You know, who cares about the big building? Why don't we start worrying about the truth here, okay? And, you know, 
God's going to bless us for doing our work. You know, we ought to start with the first works, going out soul winning, uh, get the real blessing from God, reaping that. And you know what? This all comes down to it all waters down to pride. That's what it all comes down to. You know, just like uh, Brother Jacob was preaching earlier, it all comes down to pride. And we ought to lower ourselves and exalt God. And the last thing I want to just real quick mention is we, we see this, this feigned blessing and all these charismatic church movement. And they want to say, oh, I'm filled with the Spirit, brother, because I can speak in tongues. It's stupid and it's ridiculous. And it's not a blessing. It's a curse. So you know what? I want to end that on that. And just thank you, Lord, for, uh, for having me up here. And uh, pray that all these people and all the brothers will preach your truth. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.